Let's do a morning must read right now on a different company, doing better than Walmart, I believe. Matt Levine over at Bloomberg View with a piercing essay linking in uh, Mr. Icon with Apple, and he's got a killer paragraph on money, perfect for Brian Belsky at BMO Capital. Mr. Icon likes, well, he likes this, that, and the other thing. Apple currently has $193 gazillion. <laughs> Wall Street estimates it will have 68 new gazillion dollars. It has spent 32 gazillion on R&D in its history since 1992. Okay, there's the arch use of cash, Brian Belsky, as well. Icon wants the cash. Matt Levine gives him major points for, you know, walking the walk and talking the talk. There's a lot of other apples out there as well. Apple gets all the press, but there's a lot of others. Apple gets all the press, but, you know, this, this bull market's all about the redistribution of cash. Think about how we've talked yeah. about the redistribution of wealth. But corporate America has done an awesome job rebuilding their coffers of cash. And, and there's a lot of companies that are doing a great job. You mentioned Home Depot earlier, a lot of the retailers, a lot of the other industrial companies as well. And so we think as this cash management turns into buyback stock, pay dividends, but also free cash flow yields continue to go up, that's where you want what to is, be. Well, that's massive jargon. Excuse me, what is a free cash flow yield? Free cash flow yield is the, the amount of cash that you're actually yielding. After capital expenditures. Correct, correct. And Divided that, by? You're catching me, divided okay. by, by the market cap. I'm so relieved. Whatever. I had no yeah. idea what that was. By the income statement, by revenues. Well, yeah, I mean, but, yeah, but the thing, the thing that you want to really look at is how they're operating that cash from the cash flow statement, right? And as that cash flow continues to go up and generating that cash, that's the key thing. Because yeah. at the end of the day, a business wants to generate cash. All right, I want to get back to Carl Icahn. So um, Matt Levine, who yep. wrote this morning must read, is a, one of the great treasures of this organization. He says, good data journalism project would be to build a calculator that will tell you how much our Carl Icahn thinks Apple is worth in real time. Here's how my algorithm would go. One, look up the current price of Apple stock. Two, double it. Three, print that. Okay, then show the chart again. Show the chart. Come why on, do Brian. We, why do we care what Carl Icahn yeah. thinks? Well, he's proven that he's a great investor longer term, number one. Number two, um, Apple as a stock, we, we, we think it's kind of a microcosm for the United States stock market. It's one of those names that everybody continues to doubt, believe it or not. But it's not trees growing to the sky. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, stock continues to just churn higher with respect to its operations, and it's kind of like the stock market. So, it, Is it, or is it just the best story? Is it a good proxy for the American market, or is it just the best story we have right now? Uh, I think it's a combination, but if you think about it, everybody wants to continue to doubt it, right? We've been doubting the stock market mm -hmm. for the last six years. And so that's where it is a great microcosm. There's going to be other apples just because of how much cash there is yeah. out there in the U.S. market, and they'll continue to figure it out. All right. Brian Belsky says there will be other apples. We are looking for them. They're called unicorns. They crop up only rarely.